Hello, Al Pals. This is Big Al, and welcome to Big Al Presents. And today on Big Al Presents, I am going to offer you my opinions uh, on Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. And after that, I'm going to do what everyone else on the internet's doing, so I thought I might as well do it myself, which is to present my ranking of all the live-action Star Wars films. That includes the two Star Wars stories uh, that have been uh, also released. Uh, but first, uh, let's get to what I thought of uh, Rise of Skywalker. Now, as most of you know, I am predetermined, uh, wired, however you want to say, to want to like a film. I go in it to enjoy it. I look for some good action, some good story, I hope, uh, some good acting, and it really depends on the movie, exactly what I'm looking for. I'm not going to judge Gone with the Wind by... The, the same standards that I would judge a killer Bigfoot movie. It's just not going to happen. But uh, Rise of Skywalker, overall, I will say, I enjoyed the film. It is a severely flawed film, yes, but ultimately I started watching it. And... I found a lot of stuff in it to really like. I found a lot of the action scenes I really enjoyed. Uh, some character moments I enjoyed, especially from Chewbacca and C-3PO. And uh, it, uh, it just um, dawned on me, though, as I was watching, that the creators of this film were shoving in a lot of plot, a lot of story, uh, a lot of backstory, uh, a lot of exposition in order to fill in what seemed to be a greater vision that actually should have taken two films. And I could not get the feeling out of my head that they were trying to make up for all the bad press, all the bad feelings generated by Ryan Johnson, Rian Johnson, Ruin Johnson, however you want to say it, um, that of all, all the negativity that came as a result of The Last Jedi. Now, I've always stated I didn't hate The Last Jedi. And of course, most people like to jump on me and say, you like The Last Jedi? How can you say that? I said I didn't hate it. Um, like, mm, iffy term. It's, you know, there were some things in it that I enjoyed. Uh, some of the action. Um, but uh, overall, I know it was a deeply flawed film with a vision that many people disagreed with the direction that it took our beloved heroes from the original from the original trilogy or the middle trilogy as it's now known uh, for uh, four through six I understand and I will also say that watching Rise of Skywalker lowered my opinion of Last Jedi because there is a lot of elements in Rise of Skywalker I would have liked to have seen expanded upon, uh, and that could have been done in an alternate second movie. Uh, and here, here's where we're going to get into some spoilers. So, uh, if you haven't seen it and you don't want any spoilers, stop listening now. Uh, but from here on out, spoilers are fair game. Uh, I would have liked to have seen the return of the Emperor. Uh, more reaction to the return of the Emperor. This film opens with basically telling you the Emperor is back. He's building a fleet. Uh, Kylo Ren doesn't want any of this to affect his power, so he finds a mystic device 
and goes to find the Emperor on Exegol, the mystic Sith planet. Uh, he does find him in the opening moments of the film. Uh, there's a confrontation, and before you know it, uh, Palpatine's got Kylo working for him to go kill Rey. And I couldn't help but think, and this is literally the first two minutes of the film, uh, just about. I couldn't help but think, wow, that could have really, a lot of that could have really fit into about 30 minutes of uh, building a story, building a mystery, uh, filling in a lot of lore, but then they just kind of threw it at you. And I, and I think that's what a lot of people are having issues with Rise of Skywalker. It was a lot of story put in too fast, too haphazardly, and they were throwing a lot of things that they thought the fans would like, trying to make up for a lot of the, as I said before, a lot of the negativity that was garnered through Last Jedi, whether people liked Last Jedi or not, or, uh, as many people have noted, just the sheer attitude of some of the creators and producers, i.e. one Ryan Johnson and one Kathleen Kennedy. Nobody really liked uh, some of their attitudes, some of the things they had to say to fans that didn't like uh Last Jedi. And you know what? I agree. I didn't like anything they had to say either. And a lot of people didn't like how they handled Luke. Hey, I thought Luke's story should have been uh, a lot more heroic. Uh, I, sadly, I'm not writing these films, so you know, it's not a choice I can make. But we go into Rise of Skywalker, and they literally are throwing tons of stuff at you, trying to see what sticks. And I could see how it's just bogging down the film, uh, making crucial character uh, moments go by so fast you don't have a, a chance to really see them evolve or get to the, enjoy them. Uh, they have set up Poe, Ray, and Finn as the, uh, the mystical trio of, of this uh, trilogy, and you don't really get the sense especially with Poe and Ray, because they've hardly ever hung out together, uh, that um, they're anything but casual, friendly acquaintances, not these dear, devoted friends like we know Luke, Leia, and Han were. So I, I, I see that. I understand that. Uh, but there's also a lot of aspects of this film I enjoyed. I enjoyed... The special effects. I enjoyed the the uh, the big uh, big fight at the end. I I appreciated that. Uh, there were some of the character moments that I really enjoyed. C three PO losing his memory and then suddenly not remembering people and going around introducing himself. I thought that was I thought that was a charming thing for C three PO to be doing. Uh, I, uh, I I I want to say. Enjoyed is maybe not the right word, but I was I was touched and felt emotionally invested into Chewbacca's reactions to Leia's death, and at the end, at the uh, final fight when he is handed, uh, I which I am assuming is Han's uh, medal, uh, given to him by I think it was Ma Maz. Uh, at, in, in the film and even through all that hair the actor who now plays Chewbacca I thought you could tell what he was feeling I, and I really that to me uplifted the film a lot those those moments um, and I know I might catch a lot of crap for this I enjoyed the Rayla now I'm not talking about the romance I'm not talking about the little kiss that they had which I really don't have feelings one way or the other for it happened. A lot of people say it's incestuous. I don't see really how, unless um, Palpatine, have they ever established that Palpatine technically is Anakin's father? I don't know. If, 
If it is, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. This is a galaxy far, far away. I, I'm not going to worry about it. But I enjoy the interaction between Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver as a pair of actors who are working together. I thought, I think they have a good chemistry together. I thought they worked together. I would have really have, you know, I would have liked to have seen possibly uh, more drawn out uh, interaction between the two to really get that relationship uh, to, um, to a, to a clearer, more, more fleshed out point. I, I, like I said, uh, Rise of Skywalker is rushed. Um, uh, another thing, as I said before, it does lower my opinion of Last Jedi because you can look at Last Jedi and except for uh, some of the interactions that Ray has with Luke and uh, Luke's sacrifice at the end, you can get rid of all the entire movie. The entire movie has no real um, significance now. Story-wise, it may as well not have happened. Uh, we we know the Resistance was in a bad place. That's that's all there was. You can literally, in the beginning crawl, the Resistance has suffered um, some great defeats. Boom. That's all you need to know from Last Jedi now. And uh, they could have just put out a lot more, uh, like, you know, Rise of Skywalker uh, stuff. Um and, uh, but basically that's my quickest view. Uh, just, uh, a couple of notes. Rise of Skywalker, terrible title. Uh, there was no Skywalker that rose unless you mean Ben Solo, who was re redeemed, you know, Kylo, basically Kylo Ren redeems himself and becomes Ben Solo again. Uh, I don't see her taking the Skywalker name as being a Rise of Skywalker. Uh, if anything, uh, uh, I'm, and a lot of people have an issue with it. I'm fine with it being a tribute to Luke and Leia, um, even though she could have taken the name or uh, just as easily. Uh, um, and another thing, oh yeah, Leia. You find out that Leia has force training and had been training in the force, had a lightsaber for God's sake. We never knew this before. Another little fact that could have been fleshed out in a a yet no, a, a another second movie or or whatever. Uh, just just a lot of that. They put a lot in this film that really was two films worth of outlining uh, in, in, into this when it, it really should have been the movie after Force Awakens. So I'll I'll say that. But like I said, overall, it's just too quick. Uh, but I enjoyed it. Good popcorn movie. If you like Star Wars, watch it. If you love Star Wars, live it. Live on every single thing that happens. Um, uh, you might want to stay away from it. Because, because, yes, if you did not like Last Jedi, you're not going to find redemption in this film. They tried. Um, I don't think they really succeeded, uh, but uh, I I enjoyed it. Um, I usually don't give rankings, um, and I, I don't know. I, I would give it a solid three stars out of five. Um, middle of the road for me for for a Star Wars movie. Uh, and speaking of other Star Wars movie, you have to think. And think and think. Yes, what are the rankings I would give the Star Wars movie? There have been 11. There have been the nine movies in the three trilogies, plus the two Star Wars story standalone films. So how would I rank them? Okay, um, number 10 and 11. It's the This is the only cheat I'm going to do. <laughs> I really don't know where to go with these two. These two are, to me, the weakest of the franchise. Episode 1 of Phantom Menace and Star Wars Last Jedi. 
they're almost indistinguishable uh, in number ranking number rankings now. Um, there were some aspects of episode one I deeply, deeply hated and despised. Jar Jar, the uh, the Gungan battle with the battle droids, just horrid. The only thing, the only thing I think really will keep it tied with Last Jedi, uh, brings that brings it up a little bit, is the duel with uh, Darth Maul against uh, Obi Wan and Qui Gon. So I, I'll I'll give that. So yes, these two are ten and eleven, kind of balanced. This is the balance of the force for me. Uh, at number nine. Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. And it's really only this high because of Natalie Portman's midsection. Uh, having her shirt ripped away. I've said it before, yes, it is a misogynistic thing to say. Um, but, hey, I'm saying it. Uh, basically, the film's just, you know, it just, it just really, it happened. Um, it, it really was not that that great of a film, and I just, you know, I just can't give it any higher ranking than bottom three. Uh, I will say that as we get into number eight, which is Solo, a Star Wars story, yes, I see the issues with it. A lot of people say, you like that film? Yes, I liked it. Eight through one are films I genuinely like, I genuinely appreciate. And I think they're fine films. Yes, Solo has issues. It was an unnecessary film, of course. Uh, it was fan service. It was a multi-million dollar fan film. For the most part. But hey, I watched it. I enjoyed it. Uh, the popcorn tasted great. And the action was fun. So hey, it's number eight. No lower. Number seven. Yes, this is where I put Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> um, like I said, anything anything eight and below I like. Uh, and I did, ultimately, like Rise of Skywalker, despite all its flaws, despite all its um, missteps and miscues and um, rushed, uh, rushed storytelling. It still had a lot of moments in it that I really enjoyed. What worked, worked very well. Uh, so, yeah. Rise of Skywalker, number seven. Number six, episode three. Revenge of the Sith. A lot of people really like this film. I really like this film. Number six is, for me, a very good ranking of where this film is. I, like I said... When you, when you look at number six, there's only three films. There's only, you know, two trilogies where the films left. And I don't think this is a bad place for this film at all. It was action-packed. Uh, it was a good... Um, good to see the, the finally the turn of Anakin into Vader. Uh, if the, the only thing in this film, as with Attack of the Clones, was... There is like zero chemistry between Hayden Christensen, who I'll always say is not the greatest actor, and I think of it, any other actor maybe as Anakin would have worked a whole lot better. Uh, I'm sorry, I just I just think so. He could be a fine actor for another film. I just didn't buy him in this. Uh, but his he and Natalie Portman just had no chemistry. Uh, the best things about the prequels, uh, since this is the last one that came up, was you and McGregor as Obi Wan Kenobi. That was the best thing to come, to come from the from those. That and Yoda going um, going lightsaber crazy. I love that. Oh God, yes. Um, number five, The Force Awakens. I still say this is a damn good film. This was a film that came about. It was a film that did exactly what it needed to do. It introduced the world to new characters. It, it has its moments that uh, it shouldn't. Like I said, they should have brought Luke in earlier. They should have had Luke, Leia, and Han 
team up for a while for a lot more time in this film and probably in the a mystical second film before rise as the rise of skywalker stuff got put in to be fleshed out but uh, i think the For force awakens is a good strong film and a, so and a solid number five but i will say though i believe the sequel films uh episodes seven through nine uh, especially seven and nine, I prefer as films, but I will concede that the prequel trilogy, episodes one through three, is a superior trilogy. They had a connecting storyline that goes all the way through, and that is the one thing these films of uh, the sequels lacked. Number four, Rogue One. Damn fine film. Uh, just just a solid Star Wars film. It is what all of uh, the single told stories should be like. Take uh, take a an unknown piece of history uh, that was barely alluded to in the crawl of uh, a new hope and kind of see it happen and just just great film solid acting uh great cast and great great vader cameo uh at the at moments at the end there number three and of course if you keep the track one two and three are four five and six <laughs> but how do i rank them Let's see. Some people may be surprised. Some people may not be. Number three is Return of the Jedi, Episode 6. Um, I really have nothing bad to say about this or any of the top... Uh, the other top two. Uh, Return of the Jedi was fantastic. The only thing that might have been better was if they had used Wookiees instead of Ewoks. But hey, it still it gave us the Ewoks. A lot of people love Ewoks. I love Ewoks. But uh, you know, it'd been kind of cool to get an early dose of Wookiee fighting action. Uh, number two may surprise a lot of people because my number two is a lot of people's number one. My number two is The Empire Strikes Back. Why is The Empire Strikes Back your number two favorite Star Wars movie? Because it's my number two favorite Star Wars movie. I will give you the fact that The Empire Strikes Back is the best movie of all the Star Wars films. Top to bottom, acting, effects, um, story development, everything. It's a better movie than my number one, which is the original Star Wars. Why is it number one? Because this is the film a 12-year-old kid went into and whose life was changed. This film will always, every time I see it, even still, even in the special editions, which... I will say I prefer the originals, always will, but even the special edition of, of Star Wars still holds true magic in its grandest form. Star Wars, my number one favorite Star Wars film, one of my favorite films of all time. And it will forever be number one. I don't, I cannot think of a case where Disney or whoever in the future make a film that will ever strike me or anyone like this film did. This film created a universe that 40 
two and a half years later, we are still immersed in, whether you like the prequel trilogy, the sequel trilogies or not, it is still a wonderful place that people love to hang out in. And like I said, if you don't like the sequel trilogies, you still have all the books, the Bond trilogy. There's a lot of stuff out there. But you still cannot not call yourself a Star Wars fan. You love Star Wars. And it's all because of this one. Um, I, Like I said, I remember being 12 years old staring up at this poster and there have been a ton of release posters for star wars um few initial release re-release after re-release after re-release but this is the star wars poster and this is the one one day i will have on a wall when i have space on my wall for this and a few others <laughs> But uh, that is my ranking, of course. As always, may the force be with you. Uh, whether you agree with me or disagree with me, uh, that's fine. Let me know below. I uh, just wanted to kind of talk a little about Star Wars, put out my films, and give a few ideas of what I thought about uh, Rise of Skywalker. Not as bad as a lot of people think it is but definitely definitely been better times in the uh in the star wars universe than rise of skywalker um uh, i see a film that was rushed but what it gave me i liked and uh i'll just i'll just leave it at that like i said three out of five stars it's not perfect. Uh, I even give um, episode one and Last Jedi, I'll give those two out of five. So then, you know, so don't blame me. Of course, episodes one through three, five stars all the way. Uh, Rogue Star, or uh, Rogue One, five stars. Um, Force Awakens, four and a half. So... It'll give you the idea where everything kind of fits. Uh, have a great day. Have a great new year. Uh, as I'm doing this, I hope everyone um, has a wonderful 2020. And may the force be with you.